Hello, I'm Stan Soniker with Hub Culture, and we're at the Bermuda Innovation Sprint, a two-week program focused on fintech, AI, blockchain, and all things crypto here in beautiful Bermuda. Joining me is Julian Oshikorn, the COO of XBTO. So XBTO, that's a lot of letters. What does that mean? What do you guys do? So XBTO is a, a proprietary trader uh, in cryptocurrencies. Uh, we're one of the largest uh, traders globally. Uh, the, the, the company was founded in the US, and we've now recently incorporated in Bermuda to handle all of off offshore exposure. Uh, we trade about, I'd say about $2 billion a month, uh, mainly on exchanges. And all that activity has now allowed us to kind of gradually move into a, I guess, a more diversified product suite. So uh, the trading that's originally on exchange is now moving towards OTC products, uh, and I think looking ahead, uh, especially looking at a position in Bermuda, uh, we're going to be also be moving towards more kind of regulated Okay, so you know, Bermuda has recently passed three laws and many of the people who live here in Bermuda know about these laws, but for people out on the internet and in, in the, the visitor category here on the immigration form, uh, those laws are DABA, so that's the Digital Asset Business Act, sure. the ICO law, and a limited banking law. How do you guys see that becoming relevant for your business in terms of what you want to do to scale? Yeah, well, I think firstly, like, uh, we picked Bermuda, I think, for, for a number of reasons. Uh, one of them is that geographically it works very well because of the fact that the business is originally created in New York and that we've got you know, Europe presence as well. Um, I think secondly to this, the, kind of the overall infrastructure of the island is, is, is extremely competitive. Um, the service providers we work with have all been absolutely exceptional so far, and I think that the government has been very, very good at kind of, I, I guess, um, uh, welcoming us on the island as well. Um, at this point, you know, all this is basically almost enough for us to feel satisfied with the way we operate because as a prop trader, we don't have to seek regulation. But I think that further to that, the, we anticipated that we want a regulatory, a regulatory environment because the market overall needs it. And so we looked at what the, 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 the Bermudan government was proposing, was drafting, uh, and it seemed like a very compelling basically, piece of legislation, which we think would ultimately be very attractive to the entire industry because of the clarity it provides. And you know, at this point, we're looking at kind of future proofing for what we want to do with the company. And you know, the, the combination of DABA and the ICO, the ICO bill, I think it's going to give us the framework that's going to really give us the robustness that we need from a regular standpoint to scale the business. Got it. So, you know, from our standpoint, uh, the idea of ecosystem has become exceptionally important. We've been based out of Bermuda since 2006, and we launched Venn, our digital currency, in 2007. And, you know, for many years, we were one of the only fintech uh, companies here. So when you guys set up, you were one of the first companies to really come here in the fintech space about two years ago, maybe, or 18 well, months ago? Well, like, we, we, I think we started kind of, like, exploring uh, more like last year, but the formally incorporated uh, 3rd of January this year. Okay, so it's recent. Yeah. But I feel like compared to the rest of the industry, there are 50 companies that have opened in Bermuda, I guess, all this year. Um, for us, the idea of ecosystem has become very important. So that was the idea for the Innovation Sprint, was to pull all these companies together. And if you look around with the camera there, you can see that we have a, a lot of a kind of audience here from over 25 companies that have come in for this sprint ranging from Alpha Point, which is doing one of the largest trading uh, mechanisms in many of the exchanges trading crypto. Ripple was here, IBM Hyperledger, MIT, Distilled Analytics, the Koala Foundation. So across the board, whether you're running a CoinFlip, a CoinFlip ATM or you're running um, tokenized asset securities, there's really now a community here. So I just want to say thank you to all of you guys for coming and being here and being part of the sprint because this is about us synchronizing our activity and for then the rest of the world, and the, there are now 30,000 tokens, which means some number of thousands of companies, I think the message is that Bermuda is kind of open for business in this area, right? Yeah, I think, I think that's exactly the case. Um, like anywhere else, there's obviously kind of structural aspects to what Bermuda can really deliver for companies that needs to be sold for. Uh, I think you know, the, you know, the, the, the banking environment here has some of the same kind of uh, difficulties that it has globally anyhow, but you know, in a, on, a, on, a, on a relative basis, if you combine the, the quality of the jurisdiction's reputation 
I think, the, just to your point, this kind of growing um, community. And the fact that ultimately this is all happening with, uh, um, I'd say I give credit here to the, to the Bermuda Development Agency, who's really been extremely hands-on at kind of walking people through the steps that need to be taken to kind of scale here. Um, there's, I think it's a very fertile environment uh, to breed success. Yeah, good. Okay, well, we're going to have more content from the Liquidity Summit as well as hublive.tv coming out from the Bermuda Innovation Sprint. Thank you for this little warm-up taster. You'll be on a panel tomorrow morning right. talking about the state of the blockchain. So Good. let's give everybody a little preview. What, what, <laughs> what's going on? Like, give, give us like two little headlines maybe about two headlines. how do you see the, what's happening in the market right now. Everybody's like, is it FUD or is it to the moon? So that, I guess your, your question is almost the, the problem in the market, right? Is that there is an extraordinary amount of um, dispersion in terms of, you know, you've either got people who are heavily critical of what the industry is that they deliver, and I think you've got evangelists who are, who in, in trying to over-evangelize, I think, are probably delivering a, mes uh, a message that's a bit naive, uh, especially in the context where we're trying to, to widen the adoption of the market. Um, uh, to quote one of our competitors, I think that if you think that there is a, blockchain or cryptocurrencies 1.0, 2.0 and 3.0. Um, 1.0 being uh, you know, creation and early adoption and 3.0 being mass adoption by the institutional investment market. I'd say we're somewhere in the early throes of 2.0. Uh, and, and the way, I, the best way to describe that is, you know, the kind of um, exuberance from the 1.0 has, has, has not deflated, you know, quite, quite painfully. By 75%, depending on the token. There's not quite numbers, but yeah, <laughs> uh, meaningfully. Um, I think that uh, in conjunction to this, you've got a, a very firm regulatory response that's still quite fragmented and lacks a bit of the uh, coordination that would be actually helpful for us as a global industry to actually really take a global view about what rich environments want to operate in. I think you have a sense of um, growing involvement from the institutional space into, into blockchain, uh, but it's still, I think, very limited. And I think that as an industry, we're also maybe a bit naive about you know, what it's going to take to really attract and to really create an environment in which mass institutional adoption takes place. So we've got a lot of very credible projects out there that are trying to solve for issues of custody, issues of kind of hedging instruments issues of maybe kind of transparency around um, trading activity, that all solving for one variable in what ultimately has to be a very big coordinated piece for this market to basically move into mass adoption. Uh, but having said this, you know, once you take out, like the original point, some of the hysteria, I think, that's actually kind of taking place, either negatively or positively, and once you kind of take all the progress being made into account, uh, I think there's, there's plenty of grounds to be very optimistic about where we're heading. Okay, very good. So that's a taste. Um, we're gonna get back to a very lovely cocktail evening here in Bermuda. We'll see you online, and thank you very much, Julian. Thank you. Okay, great.